Skukune, a largely rural district in Limpopo, where 1.19 million people live. That's about 20% of the total population of the province. It's a mining district with more than 50 mines in operation and with others in the prospective stage. With that many mines, one would think the district would be thriving. But when venturing through the district's roads and homes, development is partial. Worse still are some of its hospitals, which communities say have reached scary levels of deterioration. Eyewitness News visited the district for an investigation into Skukune's hospital crisis. This is the Nchabileng Community Health Centre in Appel, about 100 kilometres away from Polokwane. It wasn't planned as a clinic. In 1997, it was set out by the local government to be a hospital, the only hospital in the old Fetahoma municipality. But facilities needed to turn it into a hospital were never completed. The Fetahomo area has over 30 villages, and after the area merged with Tubate to become the Fetahomo Tubate municipality in 2016, the need for a hospital appeared to be greater. The new municipality has over 420,000 residents. The closest hospital for people there is in a different municipality, Makudu Tamaha, between 60 kilometers and 80 kilometers away. I mean, I get on Protests, calls, and letters written to the government from people in the community to provide them with a hospital has been going on for years. A court case was opened in 2020 to compel the provincial government to build one. But the province's health MEC, Popi Ramatuba, asked to discuss the matter out of court and settle it internally. She said to us that she is going to check in their files so that he can, she can tell us what is it that is happening or what happened in the past for this thing not to become a hospital. The, the, the yard itself, it shows you that uh, it was supposed to be in a hospital, as you can see. But due to the political dynamics and whatsoever, I, we ended up we ended up uh, having a CHC than having a hospital. She decided to disappear, even today. All the the, 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 the royal kings around there and queens have met. We agreed with uh, the MEC that she must come to resolve this matter, even today, since last year. She never came back, but we keep on writing letters to the office of the MEC. Beyond this issue in the municipality is an even bigger one. Access to running water. Not only are patients forced to travel over 60 kilometers from their home to Jane First for proper health care, their source of water is also going there too. Every day, trucks collect water from the municipal pumps to take it to the new Jane First Memorial Hospital. Uh, the explanation we caught is that there is no reliable water pipe to provide water to the hospital. So they uh, advertised a tender for a service provider who can collect water and transport it to the hospital. So the explanation also we got was that it was just a temporary matter. But now it has been more than 10 years. And they are collecting water from a water pipe pump uh, that it was supposed to provide water to the local communities. And the local communities are not getting water. So if you go around, the taps are dry. The, 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 the people from Makutamara are taking water here. 
selling water to the, selling the government water to the government. Yeah, <laughs> Sito pila ka meza di traga kufisha ne juale nagere umusha nagere aibeng enough is enough rekwele kolo koleka ne ngeli dire mano aor sepete le sele sete kame kadi pompi cha 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 ka meza chomo fasi ailongo reatse wa or the villages around the hospital in the town of Jane First in Makudu Tamaha are too not receiving any water from the trucks coming from the Feta Homo Tubatse municipality. Their homes and facilities are run on dry taps, and people must resort to filling their own Jojo tanks. Mokwajana, who is also an Mkonte with Siswe veteran, says this was not what she envisioned after 1994. Eh, ke be ke dipudi tsa gore ka morago ga ngwagwa ga 1994. Ka morago ga ntse ke be ke dipudi tsa gore ga ne tswale tsa ke bolela ka So be ba bolela ka the people shall share, the people shall govern. But right now, the people shall share, the people shall govern. Rasanja and Rasafara Rasafara Kuru 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 up to six million rand is spent every six months on the contractors whose trucks deliver water to the hospital. It about ten years. Yeah, it got me so me. Go 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 fit a mo kaori. Do you know it's they also have concerns about the safety of the water being brought in. That's why Community members say that there are boreholes near the hospital. The community also pointed out a big reservoir that's in eye view from the hospital. This reservoir was built in 2010 for the hospital and communities nearby, but residents say it remains unused. 
the reservoir is only one kilometer away. So, and while the new Jane First Memorial Hospital may be receiving water, it is not free of other worrying healthcare issues. The community complains that the hospital has a shortage of staff and mistreats its patients. 36 year old James Masha is a former patient of the hospital who was admitted after being involved in a head on collision with a taxi. So I got a so so the police are getting younger sometimes, over Sunday, so to see. I wish maybe put on if you are a Fagararo, Gano Jarate, a judge. A traction, a paradigm for a traction. I wish you should give you a mara, Greg, you know, age your signal is your Nagi, Marie, please don't accept you. Gasapa Sangasapa Jen first. Masha only received a bath after being transferred five days later to Matlala Hospital over an hour away, in hopes that they would operate to fix his leg. The operation had by then become too risky for Masha and opted to not go through with it. Masha currently walks with the limp. He believes this disability could have been avoided if he received the proper care at the new Jane First Memorial Hospital. Uh, my brother was a good person. He was not having the problems. And my brother was working for his child. He was the three child, three boys. He was working and he was supporting them. Even me, I was supported by him. Today, his child is going to be my child because my brother now, I lost my brother. So I don't know what I can do. I'm still thinking about the, his child, what I'm going to do. So, Mokone took his brother Moses to Philadelphia Hospital after falling ill. He had a stomach ache, felt weak, and could not eat. Mokone said they were turned away from the hospital. Monday, so, by Lebano, we are fellow Biaro, about Honomutusha, then like the Gamakala, Gaba with this Agarbiano Halamutusha. So, Moses was thereafter taken to a clinic in Intwane, in Impumalanga. But while they welcomed Moses, they weren't able to find out what was wrong with him. He was given some medicine, and they were told to come back in the morning. Uh, 
so Moses passed away on 2 June 2021. These healthcare facilities are not the only three which are said to be on the verge of collapse. At Matlala Hospital, community members say dirty laundry was found lying outside for six months. Other hospitals had complaints of poor maintenance and crumbling infrastructure. How do people think the district could see such a collapse of its hospitals and why it's gotten this far? Poor management, um, poor management, uh, lack of care, um, and uh, generally I think that people have just become, I don't know, lazy. Uh, people just don't want to do their job. I think they, they've become this reactionary kind. You know, they, they are reactionary. They react on situation as in when they happen. Uh, we, we have, in all of these instances where we have identified uh, problems in the hospitals, we have communicated directly with the HODs of health in Limpopo. We have raised the issues with the, uh, the, the district directors of health. Uh, we have, in fact, in some instances, even spoken directly to some of the uh, CEOs uh, in these hospitals. But um, nothing happens. The situation is as bad as it is. It's a leadership crisis because what you have is the policies are there, but the problem is that those policies are not implemented as expected. The appointments are mainly about comradeship. It's about who knows who uh, in the ruling party. Now, it's not about competence, it's not about qualifications, it's not about being able to do the job, but it's about paying you back for being loyal to some individuals. In 2001, then-President Thabo Mbeki identified Skukune as one of the nodal points for the presidency's rural development program. But the government was really interested in, you know, they, they had a commitment to commit resources, human and uh, human and financial resource, uh, resources to uplift and develop these communities. But um, nothing has changed ever since. Um, almost every single thing that was touched is either incomplete or currently is in the state of disrepair. According to me, I'm going to convince people of a community to get all out to go to vote but not voting for that ruling party, for any other party that can give a hope to us, but not this vote in the ruling party, as they are doing such things to us. There's been law. Limpopo Health MEC Popi Ramatuba told Eyewitness News that the reason the Nchabileng Community Health Centre was not finished as a hospital was due to poor planning. I'm of the view that the reason which might have made them to stop, because at that time it was not finances, the, the, the department was doing well, we didn't have a crisis. The, the situation here, what it's my understanding is that whoever has planned had a poor planning. Uh, mm. I'm saying that the, the planning was very poor uh, because they started building and think to say, we might have made a mistake by building a hospital in this particular area. We probably should not have. Ramatuba says when she met with the community, it gave her a list of demands. Full-time doctors, an ultrasound machine, ambulance, and more. She provided them with their demands on the condition they started using them. 
because the portfolio committee came from national and also from the provinces in the past and find your utilization being very low it does not even qualify to be a health center mm. now you gave me reasons why the utilization is poor and say you don't have doctors you don't have x-rays you don't have what i'm giving you all those things but do me a favor let the utilization pick up i cannot bring patients there they must do that on the water issue involving appel and jane first ramatuba says the problem stems from illegal water connections so around jane first uh, what the municipality did there's a b- bulk water supply which is shared between the community and the the hospital i think there is that that system there was a a supply connection that was taken from that dam to the hospital directly now what the community did is exactly what they did in ileng they went and drew illegal connection to say if we can have water as a community why should the hospital have then they connected water to their houses illegal so when they do that the water you see the hospital is up there the water doesn't reach the hospital the water ended up in the in the houses so then we complain that we don't have water and we are paying but in the meantime as a hospital as department of health we send our engineers some years back they drilled i think we've got four or five bowls dry mm. there's nothing there's nothing much we can do about it so municipality felt because it's, it doesn't help to bring water this way community are interrupting then let's supply the water through the tanks She also said Moses Makone's situation at Philadelphia Hospital resulted in a break in communication and on that same day Makone came in there were three vehicle accidents that had brought in seriously injured patients. Now when he arrives the nurse at the uh, who went to receive them as a family took the vitals which were normal and take the file and went to see the doctor who was busy resuscitating a patient in a motor vehicle accident the doctor went out and see the patient who could talk but who is chronically ill and in terms of pros- protocols when you are chronically ill you cannot be an emergency at night because you are chronically ill But when you are in an accident, road accident or a stab wound, we stop the chronically ill and attend to that. The patient who has been diagnosed from 2016 as the cancer of the larynx. The family knew the sad story is that the patient had defaulted. The patient did not go for chemo, did not go for other therapy. We don't know where the patient was. Now when the doctor mm. sees the file and sees all what he advised was that let the patient come to surgical OPD clinic. Mm. SOPD clinic is a clinic which was run by the surgeon in the morning. The family thought they are saying go to Parlarte clinic. The patient was not turned away from the hospital. The patient was referred to surgical OPD clinic because we have got a surgeon in the hospital. So so mm. when I analyzed the report and the file of the patient I realized that there there was little that the doctor could do unless we had more doctors it's a weekend you've got the other doctors were in theater at that time with emergency cesarean section on that day so unfortunately this was a wrong day so we have done redress in the in the hospital regarding Uh, this the ceo quickly acted on that uh, they've also put up a triage room where they will keep a professional nurse to sit in that triage room and assist cases mm. like this one at matlala hospital the health mc said the case is not what it actually appears to be so matlala hospital has been outsourced the loan uh, on this particular day the 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 service provider because he must come in the morning and collect the linen and take it to 
to wear. So what the 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 cleaners in the in the hospital does, what we call water tenant, every morning they must take soiled linen, sluice it, separate it, put it outside there in the sun. Mm. You don't pile it inside the the ward. You put it outside the laundry in the sun. And we have reasons why we're doing it, we're putting it in the sun. The, the service provider called the hospital that my truck broke this morning. It can happen to anyone. Give yes. me two hours uh, to get an alternative. I will come. Mm. Somebody within the hospital saw an opportunity and take pictures and send to residents for us. Residents put it on social media. I saw it the same day when I called the hospital. Mm. They told me, no, come, let me see. The, the, the guy we had called him, he had already come. He made a plan and came and collect the linen. Mm. So that was on mm. that day, the issue of the, the loan. Infrastructure in, in Limpopo health, not only Limpopo. Infrastructure in health, it's a serious challenge. And unfortunately, we 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 are found in a situation wherein there has been delayed the the years that we were under Section 100. We stopped all the refertilization progress. Now we had to restart to catch up. When we restart, COVID-19 was here. So that, that is another a problem that is facing us. People must judge us from the results. How many people have died before I was appointed? And how many people am I saving? People must, with the limited resources, with no nurses, we still run the biggest vaccination campaign. The bottom line is that in Limpopo, you've got one of the best team, given the constraint and this, we are the poorest in terms of money allocation. There was some, one day when we were meeting with Treasure, showing funding, Limpopo is the least funded proportionally speaking. But we're able to pull with those. How many rural provinces were able to pull the current medical specialists that I have? 